research. And uh, <coughs> we've actually continued to, to monitor developments in election cybercrime over the past year. And so we've actually included some new stuff from, from uh, 2013. Looking back at recent work, we really could only find a single source for election related cyber cyber crimes, which was Frederick's 2008 Black Hat present, presentation titled Cyber Crime in the Electoral System. Frederick I, I, I identified cyber crime in the 2008 election, and we found similar types of, 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 of activities, most most notably cyber 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 squatting. Cyber squatting is basically registering a do, do, domain name in bad uh, in bad faith for a purpose contrary to its intended. So, how can cyber cyber spotting be, be effective in an election? You can you can create a website based on a politician's name that dis, that discusses problems with that politician. Maybe not necessarily illegal, morally dubious, but you can also create a website based on a politician's name that redirects to a porn site. Um, that is quite different, and uh, frankly, I'm really excited for when that actually happens. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Robert said that it makes them much easier to uh, to uh, find. Um, <laughs> so this table shows some malicious domains that that we I I I identify. The the left hand column shows the URL, and the right hand column shows what page you would see. We didn't identify any sites that redirect to <coughs> but we did find but Viagra storefronts. Um, and so here are sort of the types of things we uh, we uh, uh, found. And many of these sites were just really redirections or copies of another politician's site. Bless you. Um, so we saw cons conservative candidates stealing attention from each other, mostly. Um, for instance, the, the the first two sites listed here are a, a play on Mitt Romney's name. The first is MittRomney.com with a, a zero, and it's a copy of RonPaul.com. And then uh, the second was Mitt Romney, uh, which was a, a copy of Barry Johnson 2012.com, which is the Libertarian candidate's site. Um, number five there, um, DonateObama.com. Number six was this awkward musician's website. You guys got to go check it out. It's a really weird headshot. Um, uh, number seven, uh, Barack o Obama, 2008 or something like 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 that was a third party Barack Obama site selling Viagra. Um, and eight and, and nine were the most interesting cases. Eight was uh, DemocraticNationalCommittee.org, which was uh, a which is basically a fake site for Democrats.org. Um, and then number nine was the Republican National Committee.org, which was a fake site for GOP.com. So let's take a, a, a look at a, a few of, 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 of these. This one is, uh, if you notice in the top left, it says MittRonMe.com, but, it, but it's redirecting to Gary Johnson's site. And you can see that in the, the URL in the upper left-hand corner. I, I think this is... This is left for for uh, for uh, for uh, you all. Um, and if you'll notice, there's a giant one percent there, but there's two fingers. I've been looking at the site for like the past like six months. I don't understand that. Um, and if you notice here, you'll see this is Barack Obama. And um, there's also something odd going on here that besides that horrendous web design, right? I mean, uh, so, and if you, if, if we try and uh, visit any of these sites today, this is the typical response provided from uh, Chrome. Nothing's actually working. I'm going to pass it off to whoever. So we can't talk about cyber squatting without talking about kind of the goals intended for this. And you have a lot of times where you find they were asking for donations, but the donations were not actually going to any of the candidates, any uh, to anything that they were intended to. Um, and we kind of just want to play a ter uh, term this fundraising. Um, as Josh mentioned, we had the DemocraticNationalCommittee.org and RepublicanNationalCommittee.org, but both of these were 
while they gave overall political topics to make it seem uh, legitimate, um, they were often hiding uh, search engine optimization links at the very bottom. Um, there were, and we, uh, the who is information as we followed it was not uh, obscured in any way. So we could actually find out that it was owned and operated by the same individual and it traced back to the same IP and the same, uh, it was hosted at a data center in Oregon. Um, here's the uh, screenshot of democraticnationalcommittee.org um, with an obvious uh, asking for donation in the upper right hand corner. We also have uh, fake political campaigns. Most of these tend to be, uh, you know, for comedic effect, Bender for President, Ron Swanson, uh, 2012. Um, but the intent can vary away from being uh, comedic in nature into the malicious area. And here's a nice shot of Ron Swanson, 2012. Um, so as I said, we have a malicious intent or at least misleading in this, uh, these first uh, two bullets. Um, uh, there were many fake Twitter handles created, such as the real Ted Cruz or Bill Clinton 2012, which we actually have a screenshot of the Bill Clinton one below. Um, but these popped up, they weren't obviously run by the politician themselves, and they ran counter to their position in the election. Um, the Bill Clinton one and several other Democrats uh, ones were suspended very quickly. Um, the real Ted Cruz we found still exists, but it's locked down and I'm not on Twitter so I'm not following him at this time. Um, we also found that actual campaigns had millions of fake Twitter followers, um, giving them a much larger online presence than they normally would have. And so we kind of have to ask the question at this time, if political, actual political parties are going down this route doing this stuff, what are the people that are going to be malicious going to do? Um, and we know that there's already plenty of malicious activity as it pertains to Twitter, but we could, at this point, I don't think we have any documented uh, methods of ways people went, <coughs> sorry, uh, used Twitter during the 2012 election. Um, another area was the uh, super PACs that arose during the 2012 election. This wasn't the first election that they were part of. Uh, the court case which allowed super PACs to come into existence was in 2010. So they were able to take part in the election then, but this was the first presidential campaign that they actually uh, were a part of. Um, Pretty much super PACs were allowed unlimited fundraising. They had no limits. The only, uh, one of the major stipulations is that they can't, could not give that money directly to a candidate. Um, however, that doesn't stop them from campaigning on the politician's behalf. Um, Our country deserves better. PAC was one that uh, had a website at one point in time but they have since moved on to Facebook. However, as you can see uh, via Google, uh, their website seems to uh, have been taken over or at least being redirected. Um, but this does, does also, besides ways that we'll talk about that PACs can be possibly uh, malicious or misleading, um, we also have to think about the fact that PACs themselves with their unlimited fundraising could become targets. So we identified two potentially misleading ways that super PACs could operate online. They could either do it through cloaking or phishing or as we mentioned, cyber squatting. Um, but there's also the fact of using the funds contrary to their stated uh, goals. So one of the uh, PACs that we uh, looked into was the Coalition of Americans for Political Equality. Um, we found that they were cyber squatting for Alan West, 2012. Uh, and uh, Mitt Romney in 2012. Both of these had the appearance of official campaign sites, but in small print at the top and bottom of the pages, they were saying they were being funded by the KPAC. Um, initially, uh, if donations were made against the site, it actually went to fund KPAC, but after some news reports came out, they started to redirect the donation links to the actual politicians' donation sites. Um, over the 2012 election, they managed to raise $1.5 million. Um, but when you actually looked at it, 
less than $200,000 seemed to be, at least according to the FEC filings, were for or against any specific candidates. Um, and all of this was actually filed uh, in, after July 2012 in the, in the final uh, quarterly report or in the post or pre-election uh, reports. Um, it also should be noted that because this PAC came under fire, there were a lot of news reports about it. Um, a lot of people were demanding refunds and about $100,000 were given back in refunds to their donors. Um, we also have the Heart of America uh, Super PAC, which promised to uh, promote moderate Republicans and Democrats, pretty much trying to get both sides of the aisle working together. However, when you started to look at the actual um, FEC filings, they brought in a total of about $788,000. Um, but when you look at how they spent that money, $1,300 of it was spent on Democrat Sarah, uh, Claire McCaskill's uh, re-election campaign. And the large bulk of the money, $758,000, was donated to another PAC the majority pack, which was uh, used to maintain Democrat Senate majority. Um, here we have a screenshot of the uh, HOA PAC's uh, website promoting mainstream values and moderate uh, politicians such as uh, Bob Dole and Tom Eagleton. But uh, like many of the cyber squatting websites we ran into, uh, their page is no longer available today. A little bit more inventive of a error page. Uh, with that, I will turn it over to Matt. So, as Josh alluded to earlier, we received lots of spam, tons and tons of spam, um, through multiple email accounts as we were preparing for our um, presentation and everything. Uh, we didn't actually receive this letter. Uh, we wish we did. We got this from another article, um, and it's from uh, an evil Michelle Obama, basically uh, pur purporting to give somebody uh, $20 million if um, they provided a phone number and or an address, and I think there was a uh, sum of $248 or something like that. But. Uh, um, that's fantastic stuff. So, so as a uh, side project, if someone would like to uh, act as Chris Hansen and contact this person, evil Michelle Obama, um, that would be awesome. Uh, during our research, we identified a large number of people selling votes on sites like eBay and Craigslist. Uh, we used Google to search eBay listings and uh, using, you know, just standard Google terms like buy my site, uh, buy my vote site colon eBay.com, and we found tons of bids starting or tons of examples starting as low as a dollar and running as high as $10,000. Uh, sellers would promote proof of their vote as uh, by using a photograph of their ballot taken um, after they voted. Um, by our calculations though, across America on average, uh, Obama spent about $8.48 on uh, per vote and Romney spent about $8.24 per vote. I mean, that's basic back the napkin cocktail. Uh, um, calculations, but uh, with those figures in mind, uh, with with those figures in mind, the votes for sale um, on these social networks were certainly being overpriced. Um, so, for uh, <laughs> looking at this ad uh, that's provided in the slide for $25, uh, somebody's uh, up uh, up really upselling in Aurora, Colorado, and is already uh, smoking pot before it was even allowed. Uh, it's certainly realistic that voters in swing states. Could certainly be sold for a higher premium um, during, especially during the presidential elections, uh, unlike states where results are a foregone conclusion by election day. Um, so, social networks, as uh, people voted, they posted digital uh, I voted stickers uh, on their profile to determine, to, to demonstrate their pride in uh, exercising their democratic right to vote. Uh, some people posted pictures of their actual ballots and uh, to explicitly show who they were voting for. And as I just previously mentioned, these pictures can also provide the proof um, of receipt in the event that they are selling their vote. So um, taking pictures of ballots is actually illegal in a number of states. Um, we contacted several Secretary of State's offices uh, where these laws are on the books and those offices were um, didn't claim to be enforcing these laws and uh, they were uncertain of the actual laws enforcement um, within those states. So. Um, 
So on this slide uh, is a picture of a number of ballots that we found on Facebook. We found a lot, a lot of ballots, actually, uh, Twitter and Flickr. And we believe the bottom left person may actually be a candidate, maybe selling his vote. Um, so this picture is a couple of, uh, uh, um, well, it's actually, this, these pictures are a blast from the past. They're actual tweets from the from last November's uh, 2013 New York City mayoral race, where they reverted to uh, lever machines. Uh, yeah, it's not the uh, 2012 election, but uh, we thought you might like to see how exciting tweets get about lever machines. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And uh, Josh uh, is a big nerd and has a lever machine. Um, <laughs> oh, okay. Somebody else does. Uh, uh, speaking of crimes, uh, we don't think this uh, picture is uh, being photoshopped, and somebody's definitely sharing their vote here illegally. But and we also got this picture on off Twitter. So that's that's real election crime right there. Yeah, that's <laughs> that punk that, and, that and, old, and his old lady. Um, dog registered. <laughs> um, moving over to uh, big data. Um, because this really blew up during the 2012 election. Uh, given the recent discussions in the last six months of online privacy in the news and everything, we wanted to touch on this subject, um, uh, even though we don't have a lot of empirical data aside from online articles. So, um, but uh, it, it's worth or it's worth it's really worth discussing this though. Uh, don't forget that both Obama and Romney uh, relied heavily on various big data and online tracking mechanisms to better target voters within. Um, their specific demographics. Both parties gathered massive amounts of personal data on the American electorate um, during the campaign. Uh, the use of big data by campaign left a lot of unanswered questions in its aftermath, uh, such as what information was specifically gathered uh, on the electorate, on me, on you? Uh, how is this data used? What happens to the data now that the election is over? Um, this, the campaigns used a variety of cyber-related techniques to collect information on the American electorate, uh, including an extensive use of tracking cookies uh, to determine your online habits and preferences, um, combing through open source data left by users on social networking sites, and buying up tons of data from companies that mine for information such as online shopping histories, and uh, gambling tendencies, and your dating preferences. So your dating preferences will determine or help them determine how you're going to vote. Um, it is uh, said that Obama's uh, quote, uh, army of nerds uh, won him the election through the use of data collected uh, through his big data system called Narwhal. Um, so here's a picture of the Obama for America iPhone app that provided detailed party affiliation information about voters down to their neighborhoods and streets. Uh, and this, this is really what a billion dollars can buy you. Um, and uh, too bad uh, he didn't use this same army of nerds for healthcare.gov. Um, so sp <laughs> uh, speaking of failures, uh, during the election, uh, the GOP's big data system, Orca, failed in true Rube Goldbergian fashion. Uh, poll workers in swing states had issues accessing this data and uh, may not have had the information they, ne they needed to get more Romney supporters to the polls. Although there is no evidence to back this claim, uh, activist organization Anonymous claimed to be responsible for the infrastructure failures of Orca um, by creating an attack that they called the Great Oz, um, awesome name, which purported to be targeted password protect, uh, which purported to be targeting or using a targeted password protected firewall that they installed on all of the Orca gateway servers to disrupt tra traffic flows. So. Uh, um, we're unsure of the current state of Orca after the election, given its failure, but um, because it was funded by Karl Rowe, we probably won't see the last of it. Um, the uh, letter that we have on the side is actually fantastic. We cite it in our resources if you want to go read the whole thing. But uh, it, it says, you know, we, we watched as Carl's little boys and girls confidently ran their uh, sorry tests while Carl sold his uh, barons to smoke cigars. I can't see it. Um, is super small. Um, as far as uh, Obama's for America, uh, Obama for America's Narwhal big data system, uh, that was transferred to organizing for action after the election, so we definitely won't see the last of that. Um, foreign influence. Um, in our paper, we cited a report by the Government Accountability Institute, which deeply explored the activities of foreign influences in the 2012 presidential election. Uh, throughout all of our research, we tried to be unbiased one way or the, or the other and tried to present the most unbiased, uh, um, I guess, data 
in, in terms of the election. Um, so I'm just going to note that Government Accountability Institute uh, appears to be very conservative, but they mentioned a number of other things that we kind of ran into um, during our work. So it was worth it's worth discussing the foreign side of things by citing them. Um, their report went into considerable detail about Obama.com, uh, a website owned by an Obama bundler named Robert Roach with significant bi business ties to China. Uh, his website generated about 68% of his traffic from foreign locations, and in 2012, uh, it began redirecting its users to the Obama campaign donation page at my.barackobama.com. After the report, um, after that GAO or uh, GAI report came out um, in September 2012, Obama.com was modified to redirect its users to the Obama campaign's primary website. Um, after the 2012 election, Obama.com is no longer pointing to any location, or was no longer pointing to any location, but is now pointing to an uh, organizing for actions uh, website. It's now worth, it, it is worth report, uh, noting, bleh. it's worth noting that the Obama campaign responded to allegations from the report uh, by claiming that they had other ways to determine the source for campaign donations and return money in cases where they believed it was from a foreign source. Um, when, when combing through the raw data posted on the website, um, we found a number of links to both uh, Obama and Romney's campaign websites from foreign sources and their, where, they were, where the information was posted on blogs and things and people were discussing uh, donating um, from offshore places. Um, we note that uh, although both campaigns claim to not accept foreign donations, they do not appear to differentiate between citizens and non-citizens when they target their spam. So uh, speaking of going along the lines of foreign influence, we wanted to uh, specifically note the case of Miami-Dade County. Um, uh, Miami-Dade uh, received about 2,500 fraudulent uh, absentee ballot requests to their elections website in July 2012. Uh, officials uh, identified the requests as malicious and uh, noted that about 2,000 of the requests came in from a foreign IP address, probably masked by Tor or VPN or something. Um, but all the ballots were filled in manually, not automatically, and uh, appeared to be very similar in nature. So they weren't pseudo-randomly, or you know, they weren't random, they, weren't, they were very similar. So that's why they were all flagged and rejected. Um, the first few ballot requests that were domestic came from specifically within Miami-Dade County, which set a red flag to um, investigators. And they were tracked down to two individuals working on a congressional campaign within the county. Um, um, so they used their own IP addresses before saying, hey, we shouldn't do that here. That's, that's, um, great. Um, a, a grand jury made about 23 security recommendations to Miami-Dade County uh, afterwards to tighten up the uh, rules governing the absentee ballot software. And we thought it was, total, it was awesome, or since spoke bounds about Miami-Dade County that they're receiving their security recommendations from a grand jury. Um, so, near-term predictions. So, to discuss the upcoming 2014 elections, maybe the 2016 elections, we thought we'd take the opportunity to kind of make some predictions about some, the way things are going and could, will potentially be going over the next two to four, or I guess one, one this year to the 2016. Um, but uh, we, we believe that cryptocurrencies might be tar or may be targeted by campaign fundraising and cyber squatting sites. So, We'll get to hear more about Bitcoin in the news. Um, we think the election data collected by systems like Orca and Narwhal will become even more desirable for external organizations and will become, well, if they're not already, a definite predictor of how you vote. Um, if, um, if these systems are hacked and or the data is stolen, it's possible that malware could be developed to target people just based on your political views. Um, so speaking of malware, it will be, we believe it will be developed in conjunction with election crimes or fraudulent absentee ballot attacks as in the Miami-Dade case. So thinking back to that case in the previous slide, um, that case was actually detected because every manual attack was filled in very similarly, um, but we believe that automation could simply fix that, randomly uh, um, create um, you know, absentee ballots and and uh, you know, obfuscate their source. Um, so we uh, will continue to, oops, to uh, see more on PACs in the upcoming election. Uh, they control a lot of money under, under most uh, circumstances. 
Their malicious intentions may be difficult to determine until after the election, um, which is worth noting. And we wanted to kind of put it out there if we thought, or if anybody here who's familiar with such things has any other thoughts for possible cyber activities to, to watch out for in the upcoming election. <coughs> Um, so, conclusions. Um, so, we, we selected this project for our class um, as research into malicious cyber techniques and motivations um, was somewhat lacking for the last election cycle. Uh, presentation is meant to serve as a snapshot in time, as Josh, Josh said, and uh, attacks and techniques are going to continue to evolve in future elections. Uh, determining some of the intent and structure of the big data systems are, should be an interesting uh, point of research. Uh, and it would be uh, great if the architectural decisions into those uh, data, into the data collection is leaked for public consumption, and um, fake campaigns and fundraising will become even more sophisticated um, as part of the fun, right? So it's Game of Thrones. Um, so lastly, uh, we wanted to take the opportunity to encourage everyone to vote and volunteer to be a poll worker if you can. So Be a poll worker. Yeah. <laughs> Any uh, questions? So um, uh, if you want to go on online, the Election Assistance Commission has this document called a Survey of Internet Voting, and it actually uh, it actually documents every single case of of internet voting in the whole world from uh, from 1998 up until August of 2012, um, and so that will I mean, that will show you uh, uh, all of the all of the history of internet voting. Um, right now there is sort of a backlash against internet voting um, and just sort of electronic voting in general in the U.S. Um, uh, the U.S. has really made a big pivot towards towards, towards optical scan systems. Uh, so DREs are actually being being used less and, 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 and uh, less. I think for the most part it's really uh, um, Maryland, uh, Georgia, Mississippi, I think those are the big states using, uh, basically using statewide uh, DRE systems. So uh, I want to talk a little bit about Carl again. <laughs> Carl seemed so sure on Fox News that Ohio was going to go uh, Romney, and so much so that even after the numbers had come in on the majority, he still thought that it was going to come back to Romney. And I know you guys don't have the evidence, but how do you feel? I mean, So there was an interesting article from a source that uh, was kind of only one article that I could find on that question, on that specific question, and they s said that they believed Carl was using some of the Orca servers within Ohio to potentially do some kind of denial of service attack on uh, on ballots as they were being transferred electronically. Um, but as to the specifics of that, I'm unsure. Um, but that they that was one of the reasons that Anonymous claimed to have targeted that system because they found out the, that uh, strategic um, attack in advance. Yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think so, I think so. That's what I Yeah, so there were 2,500 requests made, is what the actual grand jury report says, and I, and I believe about 500 of those came from came from Miami-Dade County. Um, uh, the grand jury did not. Uh, I didn't see anything inside of that report where they thought that uh, any ballots had gotten into the system and had been counted. But uh, I think it would be really interesting to look at how they did that because uh, those. Uh, 
like that's probably going to be a big issue later on in the uh, the uh, the uh, future. And there should be you know uh, policy and pro procedures surrounding that. Um, uh, I didn't see a big discussion about what they did to look into that. So um, who knows? <laughs> It does, it, it does if you actually influence the, the ballot printers, because typically a lot of these counties go to, you know, like these you know, five to ten large ballot, large ballot printers, and so if you mess with the ink there, that would, that would scale a little bit. A little bit easier. My understanding is that a lot of the recounts go back to the actual paper. Um, that's what I would. That's what one would would hope. Um, um, there is there is a counterexample to that. that oh, really? It did happen once where, where they recounted the, the, the digital sizes that you did. Something happened when four people go back to the paper. So, uh, so they just looked inside of the the database uh, again and said, "Yep, those numbers are still there." <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Thank you. So you mentioned that uh, overseas. Say that once more. I'm super. I'm super sorry. Yeah. So you said that overseas they're doing some online voting. Uh, we're moving more to that system. So have you looked at the security of any of those systems, and what do you see the obstacles to the U.S. moving to Ah, man, that's a really in-depth. That's a really good question. Um, so. Uh, the security mechanisms in place by the different systems uh, being being used worldwide uh, vary widely. Um, some of them really are just a client-server archi architecture. I'm gonna just you know uh, I'm just gonna SSL encrypt my vote, and then send send you know send it to the uh, the uh, server and make sure that server is hardened. Um, probably not the the, the best way to uh, to secure that. Um, some of the some of the newer systems um, are are uh, are uh, using a special type of in, in, in encryption known as homomorphic in, 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 in encryption, where um, basically you can add up votes while they are still encrypted, and then just just decrypt the uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, re re result. Um, which is super interesting, right? I mean, uh, you don't uh, you don't really see that being 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 used much. Um, uh, additionally, uh, trying to think, what else? There have been uh, uh, basically uh, Aus Australia in 2010 had a giant uh, private network, probably similar to what we we would consider for the uh, the uh, DISN, the uh, Defense <coughs> Information Systems Network. Um, where uh, their 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 military basically uh, ran their own whole network that they had military voters um, vote on or vote 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 with. Uh, I think that's a very interesting uh, security measure. Um, I think the big the big obstacle here is uh, voter voter identif identif identification, making sure that I'm 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 voting for 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 me at home instead of uh, instead of instead of Robert. Um, and, and then really, uh, and, and then really, audit, audit, auditability. Um, you know, being 
you know, being able to make sure that you know my vote was 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 cast as intended and then counted as cast, but not but not able to 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 bring it back to me. And then just just general endpoint uh, security, keeping a a a, a public facing box on on the, on the internet so, so here is really really difficult. Right. So overseas, there is an element like answers that are they guaranteeing the person who are, are they guaranteeing the the? Yeah, oh, oh, uh, so um, uh, so basically, is is Estonia and, and Norway and like other other places that have that have done this for 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 basically military? They have a a a national PKI set up basically, so it's a a a personal identi you know identification card, a citizen card of of uh, sorts, um, and. Uh, that sort of robust, um, uh, you know, system like 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 uh, that is actually really really useful for these types of act, of, act, of act activities. Um, a national ID card does not leave a good taste in your typical American's mouth. There, uh, <laughs> um, you know, I would I would kind of pass, you know. Uh, so um, I think that's a big issue. Have a driver's license. Awesome. Oh, thank you very much. Cool. I think we gotta get out of here in a second. How significant or what are the implications of using cybercurrency and uh, validating voter registration and voter registration and voter registration? I'll let you guys take that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, validating. I mean, obviously it can be used to uh, validate the source. Um, uh, how, how, I don't know. We, we didn't really get to touch really on cyber currency within this report. Um, it, I've become a Bitcoin user, user excuse me, since we, we worked on this project, but we didn't really look at cyber currencies. Right. It was, it was something we identified as probably coming up, uh, could be a problem in the future. I believe it was just a couple months ago announced that um, one U.S. senator was for, a politician was going to use it for his Senate run uh, to accept donations in Bitcoin. Uh, the politician's name is escaping me at the moment. Yeah, well, no, it was like a Texas state senator, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, but but I, I think that that is actually going to be really, really hard to uh, to uh, track down. I mean, you know, Bitcoin's you know kind of made to be anonymous, right? Um, even though there is sort of a cryptographic proof of that transaction taking place. Kind of interesting. Anyway, uh, I think we have to get off. So. Uh, <laughs> I hope thanks very much. I wish you guys had.